happy to welcome back to the studio now for the first time in a long time, staff reporter for the Brattleboro Reformer, Maddie Shaw. Welcome back, Maddie. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. <laughs> and uh, you had a, a very good reason for your absence. Uh, you were down in Florida competing in the Miss International pageant. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, Miss Vermont International. And and <laughs> let's, uh, let's, you know, not blow the lead here. Uh, you You won. No. <laughs> <laughs> I you, can't take that credit. At, you were no. a winner in our book, Maddie. But, uh, oh, but I mean, the, the, the pageant experience of being Miss Vermont International, I mean, did it, did it meet your expectations? Was it what you anticipated it being, going down there and being part of this with, with a, a number of different women uh, from not just uh, other states, but other countries as well, right? right? And regions. Um, or people were representing regions, states, and countries. Uh, yeah, I had really been focusing on the interview part of it and pitching my platform. And I had heard some um, misconceptions that maybe they wouldn't ask me about my platform, that I would have to guide that conversation. But I was really happy that they did. All, pretty much all the questions they asked were about Cornelia DeLange syndrome, what I've been doing over the past few months with my title, Um so it just showed that they cared about like the important stuff that the reason I was invested in it. Um, and they had in front of them like a platform page about my brother and my application and they have it all highlighted. They're like, I'm really excited to talk with you. So even though I didn't place in the top 10, um, I still felt like I was able to get my message out there. I had former Mrs. contestants, a former Mrs. contestant message me and say, you know, my son has CDLS, mm. which is really cool. And then um, a Mrs. husband was like, it's okay. Like you got a great message out there. So people I didn't even know that heard my message did. Um, which I, was why you got involved in it. It right. actually is surprising to me. You, you, you actually applied for this. Uh, you're, you're not into pageants. You're I not a pageant person. Before. No, but, but it was something where you had a, a cause that you thought this would be a good way to get it out there. So where did this conception come from that they wouldn't even ask you about it? Um, contestants that have competed in the past. Okay. But... <laughs> Maybe their platforms just weren't <laughs> worth talking about like yours was. I, I doubt that, but <laughs> I don't know if it was just, I don't know. It is a competition still, so you never know if people are out to get you. <laughs> oh, that's true, right. They could be giving <laughs> you mis like... misinformation uh, about so. that. How many people interviewed you? Was this like a panel Five, of people? But Five, it, all but at the same time? But it wasn't a panel. It was okay. uh, individual. So you would enter a room um, with four other girls that are competing, and oh. you would stand in front of one of the judges with your back to them, and then when the director said, okay, you would turn around and greet yourself. And then when they told you to sit, you would sit in your chair and then the interview would begin. Okay. And then you have to go back behind the chair and then wait. And then you'd move the next chair. For, so for five minutes, each judge. So, and so you were watching these other four women. Was, you, you were in the room while they yeah. were being interviewed yes. as well. So there was a, a feeling of competition yes. even in this part, even though this wasn't on the stage and, and those sorts mm -hmm. of things that we see on television with the pageants. Uh, there, there is that element of you're hearing these other uh, competitors and, and feeling, did you feel competitive? You're, you're a well, bit of a competitor, they, right? You, you cross-country skiing, you <laughs> have a, a competitive edge to you. It's really hard because you want to be friends and make friends with the girls, but you're also in competition mode, so to, to stay focused, but to also like be yourself. It's, a, it's really, it was kind of challenging, I, I, I thought, to find that middle ground I know some of these girls it's like a sport for them they have been doing it for years and so they're they're comfortable and like I felt a little uncomfortable at first um nothing that the judges said or anything like that was uncomfortable but just me trying to be myself but also win or you know right whatever but. I mean what yeah that that is uh, especially if there are people who do this uh, mm -hmm. more on on a circuit basis uh, so they're there and they really right. kind of know the ropes and you so, can did yeah. you feel like some of them were kind of you know well, trading elbows with you <sighs> no not no I didn't <laughs> feel like that I, I'm not really that threatening I don't think <laughs> um I actually miss Georgia who won Miss International okay uh, she's competed in about 13 pageants in her life so there's a difference. One thirteenth times a charm, I guess, uh, right for her. Did what was? Do you remember what her platform was? Yeah, her platform is the True Beauty Movement. So she's cultivating positive body image. She's someone that struggled with an eating disorder, and so she's talking about finding confidence in your own skin and inner beauty and stuff like that. She's a go getter. She's like 
pretty amazing. Yeah, well, and, and that's really uh, the, the conversations you and I have had about this, uh, about the positivity around this. And, you know, the whole pageant culture uh, does a lot of people kind of associate with more superficial values. Uh, what, what were some of the other platforms or were some of the things that, that moved you in particular? Um, I know that some of them were about um, like empowering young women. Mm -hmm. So they talked about like in poverty, impoverished areas, some talked about uh, like reading for a cause. So like, um, like literacy helps eradicate poverty looking at that, um, hunger, some were looking to fight hunger, um, some had volunteerism as their platform, getting involved in your community, uh, that's a few that I can think of on top of my head, um, but it was like a fun week, because we didn't just, you know, compete in like all these gowns and stuff, yes, that was fun dressing up, but we got to have a CPR training class, hmm. um, we made a no-so blanket for the children's hospital, we did a tour of Jacksonville. Um, we went to the Pace Center for Girls, a, a school where they don't earn credits, um, but like points. They've kind of been in a tough situation, maybe abused homes, foster homes, and now they're in this transition stage. And our group, my group with like 10 other women, was to talk about their passions, like finding your passion. So hearing what um, they're involved in, what they think is an issue in their community and how they can tackle it. That was so cool, like the 13 to like 19-year-olds. Yeah. So for other girls out there uh, listening uh, right now, it, the pageant experience something you would encourage, yes. something you would say is worth getting involved yes. in. And I'm actually looking for someone that wants to take over my title to be oh. the, next, the next Miss Vermont International. Um, and I'd be happy to, happy to help you develop a platform and get you sponsorship or find help you find sponsorship and get get on the get yourself going with that. Um, also, a Miss Teen Vermont. If there's a teen, 13 to 18 years old. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm really glad it was a fulfilling it experience was. for you. I know that you had some trepidation uh, about doing it at yeah. the beginning, and, but and certainly it's not something uh, the cause, uh, the CDLS cause, is something you plan on continuing to forward. You yes. have the, the support CDLSVT.com website. Is yes. that something you're going to maintain? Yes, and, and the Facebook page of my website is undergoing some technical difficulties right now, but yes, um, it will be up again, and you can learn more. I'm going to be going to be writing family stories um for the cdls one of the cdls magazines soon so outstanding well congratulations on, on the experience maddie shaw also a writer for the brattleboro reformer we will talk to her about some of the stories she's been covering in the community when we come back after the bottom of the hour news break 66 degrees outside at 20 minutes before the nine o'clock hour chris lenoir back with you on green mountain mornings continuing our conversation with maddie shaw one of the reporters for the Brattleboro Reformer, their online home, reformer.com. A story that I think is a, a big story, but it was kind of buried by the results of the primary election because this came out on, well, I think it broke on Tuesday, uh, and then Maddie wrote about it in the Wednesday edition. It was on the front page of the Brattleboro Reformer in the Wednesday edition. Uh, but Sovernet mm -hmm. getting sold to an out-of-state firm, uh, Yes. Talk a little about, did they just send a press release out about this? Uh, they did, I think. I remember, I don't know exactly, but Bob Adet had, my day editor had the press release and was like, we gotta get on this. And we had so much going on that day, like you said, because yeah. of primaries and like we were all split. And this was a pretty detailed story. I mean, a big, you know, sovereign net getting sold or potentially having new owners um, is a big deal. So yes, uh, Oak Hill out of New York, I think don't remember what part of New York, but out of New York, potentially new owners for this company and along with First Light. So it's going to be like a, a tri-partnership. It's and They're all, it's okay. like, Oak Hill's like a hedge fund, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And <laughs> and do they own First Light or is it one of these, you, you never know, right, in this, in this day and age. Okay, so they don't even own First Light yet. They're kind yeah. of doing this multi-acquisition or something. I'm trying to pull up the article I have now, but um, I think that they're scheduled for purchase at the end of the year or okay. beginning of the year, um, which is the same for Sovereignet. Um, and I talked to the, the CEO, the director, Randall, um, and he was saying that... Kendall, Ken Richard Richard Kendall. Sorry. Sorry, I was looking up his name Richard too. Kendall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and he was saying that, 
he can't really predict what it's going to look like. Cause I was like, do you, do you still have a job? Like, what's it going to look like for Bellows Falls and local, local people? And I mean, the biggest thing he said that he thinks for broadband, they're going to have better people, better service and connection that way, working with like a larger company. But really he was like, I don't know. And, you know, we're going to, it's still in the preliminary stages. So in a couple of months, we'll be able to talk more about the needs for all the companies what about the decision that? to sell right now for for Sovereign to to do this? What what were they thinking as far as doing? I mean, yes, it, it is partly a Bellows Falls story because of the mm-hmm. jobs there, but this is a Vermont story because right. of the amount of money they've invested in broadband in Vermont. So, I mean, I think just financially, certain areas um, they weren't doing as well. So they had been looking at other. They had, in, had I don't know if you would say the interviews, but they had other. Um, interested buyers okay um they've so been they shopping went, for a while they've been shopping mm-hmm. the business interesting and so they've been looking at that um but he said the ceo said that um oak hill was most attractive because of their interested partnership with first light um they felt like there was more opportunity there yeah so. It's interesting to think, and I, I also couple this with the per- story about the New York company purchasing the Barber Building in downtown Brattleboro. We keep hearing about Vermont being business unfriendly, <laughs> yet there are all these uh, big companies out there willing to invest and buy Vermont properties like Sovereignet. They clearly mm-hmm. saw value in this purchase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's they're not the only ones. I mean, right? There that is we're more out than of one. state looking at Sovereignet. You know, it's more than less from outside of Vermont looking in. <laughs> One of the main things that really, I think, sustained Sovereignet was this idea of a local provider. Uh, certainly, uh, even before internet uh, was a thing of the outside of dial-up, you, 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 out of loyalty in, in a certain way, you, you bought your long-distance service. And there, I'm dating myself here, but you know, people bought long-distance service for their landline. What about, you know, Whoa, this is before, before cell phones and smartphones and things like this. But you, you went through Sovereignet out of loyalty to, to local, the local jobs. And, and did he talk a little bit about the loss of that? Uh, even if people keep their jobs, the loss of this local brand, this Vermont-based internet and telephone provider? I should have asked him that. That was a, yeah. that's a good question, Chris. But no, I didn't really get to that. And he, I think more because, I mean, I guess I did kind of get, to, I did get to that, but he was pretty much putting up a wall. Like, I can't answer that. Like, I don't know what it's yeah. going to look. If it's really going to change that local feel, yes, they have a buyer from outside. But I mean, for years, the Brattleboro Reformer was owned by like, you know, Digital First Media and they they don't know what strolling of the heifers is. They're like, what? Like, right. Cow? Like, well, there's only so far <laughs> one can take something in a, when you're small, uh, mm-hmm. and really uh, not sovereign yet. I don't want to put this on, on their doorstep as far as blame, but there's been a, a problem in Vermont, that mm-hmm. last mile service, right? That's the story. That's the phrase we keep hearing about internet providing. Now, you, you live right kind of in the town of Putney, but uh, I'm sure there are parts of Putney that still don't have <coughs> these service. Bless you. Thank that still don't have the the full broadband high speed internet service. Oh, I know yeah. there's plenty of I other mean, communities. Places like Marlboro, a lot of right. people have to go to the library to use Wi Fi and find right. internet access, <laughs> like everywhere. And there's only a finite amount of customers, a finite amount of capital uh, that a company. I mean, Sovereignet relied. You you covered this very well in the story. They built a lot of their uh, service, a lot of their broadband service, basically through the largesse of the state and federal government contracts. Right. I don't know much more about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but but that just says again they need they need this infusion of another another entity coming in and and doing the work. So, right. Something something for them to continue to we'll, we'll, we'll see how it evolves. Right. The the sale closes when? I think it's the end of the year or early 2017. I- right. Can't Something remember. coming up uh, later on. Oh, this a week ago. Come yeah. on. The date's specific. <laughs> Let's get to a story that you wrote more recently. It <laughs> okay. uh, came out yesterday uh, looking at the sheriff's contract in Putney. And yes. uh, you are becoming, just like Chris Mays is becoming an expert on zoning, you're, you're becoming an expert on how <laughs> sheriff's department operates. Uh, you wrote yes. uh, about the courthouse uh, contract, mm-hmm. which fascinating to think yeah. that that is now a private security firm mm-hmm. uh, providing security yeah. in the courts. Uh, 
probably not going to happen in a community like Putney, but what are they going to be discussing at this meeting on Thursday, right? There's a community meeting yep. on Thursday. Yep. Um, so it's a combined public safety and select board meeting where they're discussing the residents' interest on community policing. So right now, Putney has a contract with um, the sheriff's office, but before that, there has been some quote-unquote communication issues according to the town manager. That's a good <laughs> between, blanket term for it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Between the, the town and the sheriff's department, they've really tried to iron that out, but there were some communication issues when their deputy, Melissa Evans, was there for six and six years, and then without much notice, they were told that she was going to be positioned. That made a lot of residents upset. I'm from Putney, so I hear I hear this stuff. I didn't include all that that gossip in the story because right, but the, you'd written about that before too. Yep, yeah. and and so that was one thing. But really, what was the driving factor to have this discussion was when the sheriff's office pulled their contract. They rescinded the contract um, from Putney um, from 40 hours to 20, saying that they didn't meet a deadline, but. Town manager argue, Cynthia Stoddard argue, argues that they did not put a date when needed mm -hmm. for this submission, and, and, and that kind of been how business had run in previous years, right? It was it was a little bit different Never, this year what Keith right. Clark uh, did this year, right. but it's a little bit different landscape for the sheriff's department than previous years. I mean, this is sort of a, a syndrome when we talk about them losing the contract or and really through their own choice losing the contract for courthouse security or having the challenges they're having in the Bellows Falls mm -hmm. Rockingham area well yeah the sheriff's office runs on contracts people don't always understand that they think that it's mostly grants and stuff but I mean yes there are grants but it's based on contracts mostly and now that the sheriff's office doesn't have the court contract at Wyndham County or what is it Newfane mm-hmm I don't know. They are, what are they going to have to do to you know make up that difference? Um, but anyways, with Putney, they're going to be talking about four different options for community policing, and they really want to hear residents what they want because the select boards talked about what they think might be a best interest. But still, it's like they're serving the town, so they need to hear residents. So any of those ways. Eh. So they're going to anyway. propose these options at the yes. Meeting? So the four options are. Um, Resign a contract with the um, sheriff's office. Look at Vermont State Police for community policing. Um, a constable. They don't have a constable right now. And um, building a police department in Putney. And I was just looking at 7 p.m. Uh, this Thursday, and it's taking place at uh, the fire station, right? Yes. Okay. That's easy to find in Putney, I'm sure. On Thursday, yep, at 7 p.m. at the fire station. All right. The team uh, covering that for the Brattleboro Reformer, just a, a terrible story uh, by all accounts there uh, in terms of what, talk a little bit about in the newsroom, uh, how this uh, went down. Well, we weren't in the newsroom. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were all home. It happened. I think the fire started right just before midnight. Um, and we got a press release at like six in the morning about a fire and then two dead so yeah yeah um, they had already uh, reported that that the two fatalities by that time yeah so we left early in the morning to go over there um fire crew still there so chris mays other reporter the radical reformer went over and talked to some residents getting some witness statements um i went back to the fire department and talked to um one of the invest or two of the investigators fire investigators about what they saw so i mean yeah, it was a tragedy. I and mean, there's four people living in the house and two tried to save the other two on the top floor and they couldn't because of the smoke. And Brother and sister, from what I heard. Yeah, I really. <laughs> so, I mean, I, yeah. And and I. It's and, hard to cover those things. And like. It's got to be. I, I don't know. Because <laughs> <I don't wanna, laughs> you live in a small town, you grow up here. Um, you don't know what you're going to find. Like, I, I know when I hear a fire or a car crash, sometimes I, like, get nervous because I, it's already happened. I've, we've talked about this before on the radio, yeah. but, like, you not you don't know who you're going to walk, like, walk in to see or, like, when the woman got hit by the train or when Nick Wadomsky got hit by the train. Right. You know, him. People that you know. So, 
in this community. That's why it's nice to balance it out with stories like the other one that you wrote about on Monday, Farm Week, and the farm yep. tours coming up, or the endromes- endrometriosis mm, walk yeah. coming up on Saturday. The, those positive stories keep you going, don't they? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, the en- endo walk um, was very interesting because I had not heard about it. It's endro. Can you endometriosis. Have... Thank you. I have the word in front of me, so that I helps. don't. So <laughs> it is not right there in the forefront of my mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, but really cool hearing this woman's story um, about how it's affected her. You know, she was bullied in high school basically because she was in pain. Like, um, just people associate it with like menstruating, but really, it like affects your bladder and your intestines, and um, it's debilitating. Like to be in this kind of pain and she had to go through three surgeries in one year um but she's walking to raise awareness about what what she has and many others have and to let people know they can have support so that's this saturday yeah that's this coming saturday at, and the story is in i'm sorry go ahead to give the time yeah it's at 10 30 i think uh-huh. from till 12 30 and they're meeting at bradwell savings and loan right and just going downtown and back Right. It's it's this coming Saturday is when the walk is, but the story that you wrote is in the weekend edition mm-hmm. of the paper. I just want to call people's attention to that if they want to go to reformer.com. Stories that you're working on right now that people might see this week with your byline, Maddie? Gosh, good testing me here. Wait and see. I know that we're talking about some Olympic stuff, so local okay. locals competing, locals returning or heading out. Um Putney. I'll be going to the Putney You'll meeting. Be on the Putney um, meeting. And I, I have a list of stories too. A <laughs> couple previews. There's a Monarch tour coming up in Vernon. Butterflies? Yeah. Oh, very cool. All right. Well, enjoy that and look forward to having you in here in a couple weeks. Thanks. All right. That was Maddie Shaw, the Brattleboro Reformer, reformer.com, their online home. We will be back to wrap up this edition of Green Mountain Mornings after these messages. <laughs> 